Um, I am Pastor Craig Ellis, and the pastor here of Celebration Assembly. It is so great to have you here in the house of the Lord today. As I do, I always like to make a push personally as your pastor. Um, we would love to see you here every single week. Uh, you can put that next slide up, son. Uh, we would like to see you here every single week uh, for, our, uh, for our weekly prayer times that we have here at the church. And um, it is a great time. Uh, we do have Mondays, every Monday from 6.30 to 7.30. Uh, man, we get like a good 10 to 15, if not more, people here that are on their knees crying out to God, praying. And what I love is when we're just praying in the Spirit praying the perfect will of the Father. Um, it's from 6.30 to 7.30. Uh, it's very, again, it's very, you come here, um, we, you walk around, it's just a powerful time. There's music being played. Uh, we usually start out with uh, uh, some kind of a, a, a worship song as well. It's just a powerful time. Uh, we have, we always, uh, one of the things that we are really starting to do here is giving many opportunities for communion. So we have communion here at our prayer times as well. I really believe when we meet at our different times let's have that opportunity uh, for communion so and then the other one is Sunday mornings we encourage you uh, if you're not already part of Sunday school we encourage you to be here in the sanctuary at 9 30 where it's another powerful time of prayer and worship and then we usually end that time like we did today uh, at 10 10 to come together and pray specifically for anointing of the Holy Spirit on our service and so we really believe in the power of prayer for the needs of our church community and nation prayer is powerful and effective prayer precedes the miracle in your life precedes the healing that he wants to bring and precedes a move of God on your family and on our church and we truly believe that we're planting seeds of prayer today that will grow in the seeds of revival tomorrow can I get an amen Amen. So if you've not been a part of one of these, please do this, because I know that you have, there's things that are weighing on your heart, especially now for the country of Israel. And there's so many different things that are going on. God is looking for a praying church. Amen. Amen. All right. My message today, uh, as we continue in our series, it's a kind of a shorter series. There's uh, there's only going to be one. It's only a three-part series. Um, and so my series is called Fear is Not My Future. If you're on Facebook, um, you know that when I promote this series, I attach the song. There is actually a song called Fear is Not My Future. It's a powerful song. If you've not heard it yet, make sure you go on Facebook and go on to our Celebration Assembly page and then just click on that, um, click on that YouTube, uh, YouTube video and you'll see it. It's a powerful song. But um, fear is not my future. Last week we looked at that in the presence of God, fear is gone. Well, we're going to look this week about his peace that dispels all fear. And so if you can turn into your Bibles to one of my favorite scriptures, Philippians 4, verse 4. Philippians 4, verse 4. And as you're going there, we also don't want you to forget that we do have sermon notes uh, on one side. They're the blue sheets. On one side are all the notes, my, are all the announcements my wife just read. And on the other side are all the fill-in-the-blanks for my sermon notes. If you did not receive it through the cracks, maybe, or whatever, you just got in and forgot about it, we do have them at the entrances. If you could grab one and follow along with us, you'll know what's going on through the week. But also you can follow along with the message and you can probably remember more uh, that way as well. But if you can turn in your Bibles to live Philippians 4, verses 4 and 9. And in honor of God's word, if we could stand as well. Amen. We haven't done this in a while. Let's put our Bibles, put your phones, whatever you have right now. Let's throw them up in the air. Our Bibles are full of what? Good stuff. Our Bibles are full of incredible, awesome, wonderful stuff that will change your life, that will change your family, and will change our community. Every answer that you need is found in this word right here. And don't, don't ever forget it and always be in the habit of reading it. So Philippians 4, verses 4 and 9. I love this scripture so much. It's one of those that I have attached to the wall of my office that I read often, almost every day, uh, to remind me of what I need from the Lord. And it says this, rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. Everyone say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Now this is what I repeat all the time to myself. Do not 
be anxious about anything. Now, you could take that and you could put fear in there. You could put depression in there. You could put anxiety. You could put panic attacks in there. We are not to be anxious or fearful about anything, but in every situation, by prayer, that's why prayer is so important, and petition, meaning you're bringing your request to God with thanksgiving, present those petitions or those requests to God. And what will God do? It's an exchange. You do one thing, and what will he do? And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, and I, I always love to use this too, especially when it comes to mental illness and mental healing, that when you give the Lord your life, he will guard your heart and he will guard your mind. So if you're dealing with a mental illness, use this as well to know that the peace of God, not also, the peace of God will also not only guard your heart, but he also wants to rewire your mind as well. Amen. Amen to that. That's awesome. All right. Finally, brothers, what, uh, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent. So you have all these things, and if, you, and if you forgot about it, Paul will say, if anything then is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice. And when you do that, when you think about these things, and you give your life to the Lord, the peace of God, the peace will be with you. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, many of us in this room deal with fear. Many of us in this room deal with depression or anxiety or doubt or confusion. But Lord, you did not give us that spirit. You gave us a spirit of power and of love. And again, you gave us a spirit of a sound mind. You don't want our minds all confused. You don't want our hormones all over the place. You don't want our serotonin levels going up, down, all over. You literally said, as we give you ourselves, you, Lord God, will make our paths straight. You will renew our minds and you will guard our minds. And so right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I am praying right now that you would renew every mind in this room. You would give peace in this room. And Lord, I don't know what's going on in Israel and I don't know what's going on in everyone's life. But what I do know is that God is in control and he's not up in heaven saying, wow, I did not know that was going to hit your family. Oh, wow, I did not know that that was going to happen to you. He knew it and he's going to make all things fall into place because that is a God that I serve, that he helps, he is there with those who love, them, who love him. Lord, be with us today. Renew us and strengthen us in your holy name. We all say, Amen. Amen. I want you to take that to heart today. God wants to heal you today. God wants to heal you spiritually today. He wants to heal your brain today. He wants to heal your mind. He wants to heal your heart today. He wants to heal what you are going through, whether it be a cough to cancer, whether it be fear, anxiety, whatever it is, the love and the blood of the Lord is here for you today. Amen. When Jesus comforts his people, when Jesus comforts his disciples before, he, before he's arrested, this is what he said in John 14, 27. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give as the world does. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. Do you know how many times in the Bible God has said, peace be with you, do not be afraid, do not be afraid, have peace. I mean, he knew how, we, how, how much of a struggle it would be for his humans, how, how much struggle it would be for his creation. And that's why many times he said, my peace I give you, do not be afraid, fear not, be courageous. Peace is something all of us need, all of us need in this room. Whatever your education, I don't care if you're rich in this room or poor in this room, 
young or old, a believer or not. We all have moments of stress. We all have moments of anxiety. If you're struggling, you are concerned about not having enough to eat. If you're rich, you are afraid of being robbed. The healthy worry about getting sick, and the sick worry about dying. If peace is a universal need in this church and, and in this world, then God is the answer for it. Matter of fact, like I just read before, where else are you going to go? Where else would you go to get the true answers that transcend all understanding? For the, for the answers that the world gives are only temporary. But the answers that God gives is eternal. The word of God tells us three things that we read today. First, that peace, and these are your blanks here, is that peace is a gift. It's a gift of God himself. Matter to them, uh, it comes from God. What I love about this is that the peace of God, it's not like, and, and I think I've said this before, and I'm probably going to say it again in my message. It's not like God says, hold on. Let me find, okay, there's, I have a pile of love. I have a pile of hope. I have a pile of grace. I have a pile, well, you know what you need? You need peace. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to give it to you. No, he doesn't do that. God does not give from the extras that are in the back. God is peace. God is peace. It's not like he has to say, where is it? It's right here. He literally gives you himself. God doesn't have to go and say, you know what? You could use a little love. Man, I'm a little low on that, but I think I have a little bit. Here you go. No, he is love. He is love. You don't have to worry about, God, can you give me some peace? All you have to say is, God, give me more of yourself. Do you know that you don't have to ask for love and peace? If you just, if you just get closer to God, peace just, you get peace for free. The closer you get to God, you just get the love for free. Why? Not because God is saying, I'm going to give you more, because he is that. And if he is that, when you get into that presence, that's why the more you get into God's presence, that is the biggest weapon you have. Because when you get into his presence, his presence has everything you need. It has the love, it has the hope, it has the grace, it has the mercy. That is why the more times you can get into his presence, the more you will have this peace. Because God is peace. Number two, peace is God's will for you. You don't have to say, God, if it be your will, give me your peace. No, God, it is his will because why? It is God. God does not want us to live in fear or worry. That is from the enemy himself. He did not give you that. It's a spirit. It's an evil spirit from the enemy himself. And he said that it's not a spirit that is from me. And if you have it, it is from the enemy. And you should rebuke it and resist it because it is not from God. Do not be anxious or fearful about anything, Jesus said. Do not worry about what you would eat or drink or wear. Look at the birds of the air. Matter of fact, even this morning, some of us were looking that there's a bird going back and forth at the entrance there. We were, we were seeing that going back and forth. And you know what? I'm sure that bird's not like, oh, man, I don't know what to do. I don't know what. No, the bird knows what to do. The bird has instincts. God takes care of the birds. He takes care of the lilies of the field. How many lilies have you seen full of anxiety? Oh, I love the flower of anxiety. Oh, that smells so good. You know? I don't see birds that are like, man, my goodness, I don't know where I'm going to get that worm today. That they, God just takes care of them. They don't have to worry about it. And if God takes care of the birds of the air and the lilies of the field, how much more? I love that in the word. I love when the word says, how much more? God didn't say, and I will give you exactly what I gave them. No, he's going to give you more than the birds, more than the lilies of the field, because he loves you and he is, you are his creation. 
The Father feeds them. Number three, God gives us peace in the midst of trouble. God will give you this peace that you don't know where it's coming from in the midst of troubles. Can there be, now here's a question I have. Can there be peace in a calm, safe, and a stable environment where every meat is met? Of course. Of course you will have that peace. This we understand. You don't need to explain about the peace. You know, when you watch it, you know, you know, you're not probably, at the end of the day, you're watching your favorite TV show. You're probably not watching it on all fear. No, you're, you're comfortable. You're at home. You're watching your TV. You got your popcorn. You're in your relaxed state. You're not fearful. That's easy to explain that you're going to be okay. But what about the peace that God gives that goes beyond this? The one that transcends all understanding. We don't understand because it does not come from ourselves. This is a peace that we don't have. It's not a peace that, you know, that we, um, that we just naturally get. It is only a peace from God that transcends all understanding. It is not the result of the environment that we are in or the people that we are with. It comes from God himself. It is a peace that we experience even in the midst of all of our issues and anxieties. Only God, only God can give us such a peace. Why? Not because he has the inventory. It's because he is the inventory. He is the peace that you need. God is the love. That is why, I, and you know what? That is why hell is so incredibly bad. That is why, you know, in our idea, we think of hell as bad because of fire or because of the heat or, no, 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 no. What scares me more about going to hell is not the fire, would not be all the, it's not even the torture and all that. It's the absence of God. Because when you think about it, the absence of God, if God is light, that must mean that hell's dark because there is no God. If God is love, that must mean that hell has no love. If God is hope, that must mean that in hell there's no hope. Because if God, are, if God is these things, and if hell is the absence of God, then that means it's the absence of everything that God is. So there is no love. There is no joy. There is no hope. There is no light. You're in complete darkness, feeling no love. I mean, have you ever been at a place um, where you've been, where you have felt like you're all alone and there's no one around you and all this and that? I mean, put that times 10. I mean, that's the scary thing about hell. It's not the torture or the fire or whatever. It's the absence of God himself, which means the absence of everything he is. For eternity, you will never feel love again. You will never feel the warm embrace of a loved one again. You will never feel that touch that that loved one gives you to let you know that things will be okay. You know that, you know that those times where you're like, man, I just want someone to tell me it's okay. You will never experience that in hell. You will all experience fear and, and being deserted and scared. And it's just, I mean, when you think about that, it just, matter of fact, I don't know why anyone would ever entertain that thought about going. I don't know why anyone would ever think that it's a party there. Only the enemy could be deceiving them because in hell there is the absence of anything, anything glorious and all of it, all of it dark. Um, I just wanted to just say that because I just, because some people have, because uh, I've, I've talked to people about that, that really literally that God is not there. John 14, um, uh, I'm sorry, first of all, it is not the result of the environment that we are in or the people that we are with. It comes from God. It is a peace that we experience even in the midst of our problems. Only God can give you that peace. It comes from him. Jesus said in John 14, 27, which is on the screen, peace I give you, I said this before, my peace I give you, I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. It is a promise and it is meant for you and it's meant for me. We want his peace. How can we experience this peace? There are two quick things I want to share with you that Paul says. First of all, how do you experience this peace? You pray and give your trust to God. That's that next space or the next slide there, son. Pray and give your trust to God. Don't 
carry your burdens alone. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I, the Lord, will give you rest. Do you want rest? Give your burdens to the Lord. Give your cares to the Lord. And let him give you the rest that you need. It is not God's intention for us to handle life on our own. Paul says, do not be anxious about anything, not even one. And then he adds this, but in everything. So don't be anxious about anything, but in everything. Present your request to God. Present your hurts, present your pains, present the things that are going well, and present the things that aren't. No distinction between big or small, important or trivial. Everything needs to be present to God. And as Bill Everlean always reminds me, because I say it all the time and I'm going to say it again. If it's a big deal to you, right Bill? If it's a big, because he is, I know he's used this many times in his life. It's a big, if it's a big deal to you, it's a big deal to God. I don't care how small or trivial. I don't care if you lost your keys. I don't care if you lost your glasses. If it's a big deal to you, it's a big deal to God. I know there have been many times where we have lost something at the house. And I said, you know what? We just need to pray about it. Let's just stop. And we can go crazy trying to find it or we can pray. And usually many times, matter of fact, I've done this with... Uh, with Zach not, or with Nate not too long ago, we were looking for something and we couldn't find it. And I just said, we need to pray about it. And he was kind of like, yeah, yeah, okay. All right, dad, went, okay, come on. Um, but I said, no, we're going to pray about it. We prayed about it. And shortly after that, we ended up finding it. I don't think it's a coincidence. God wants the small things as much as the big things. Do you know, I don't tell my kids, you know what? You deal with the small things. And if it's a big thing, then you can come to your dad. No, I want my kids to come and to, to ask anything. Kaylee, I love it when Kaylee calls. You know, and she might have a little bit of a problem. You know, uh, uh, how do I turn, dad, you know, especially at first. Dad, I, how, do I, how do I turn the windshield wiper on? You know, you know, I could have said, you know what, honey, just deal with it. And you figure it out. No, I told, that's my girl. That is my girl. And if she needs help, I'm going to try, I'm going to do whatever I can to help her, whether it's small or big. And how much more does my God want to help me in the small things than in the big things as well? So please, I really request for all of you, even in the small things, your car doesn't start, well then pray over your car. Put your hand over that car and say, Lord, Lord, help this to start. And if there's a problem, I'll take it in, but help me start it right now. Your washer and dryer, pray over your washer and dryer. Pray over whatever it is. Pray over it because God cares about the little things in your life as well. Matter of fact, Billy Graham said, Christ alone will bring lasting peace. Peace with God, peace among men and nations, and peace within our hearts. It is all to him and nothing upon us. All to Jesus I surrender. He is Lord. This is actually giving God his due honor. He is the boss. He is the big cheese. He is everything. And I magnify the Lord when I trust my life issues to him. It is a choice that we must make. We cast our cares on him when we pray. Matter of fact, Psalm 55, 22 says this. Cast your cares on the Lord. And I added that. What is that? What is ca that is prayer. Casting your cares on the Lord is prayer. And he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous... Mm. I needed that. He will never let those that know him be shaken. Someone needs to hear that. Maybe that was me. But the thing is, is that we need to hear that those who are in the Lord will never be shaken because they know who their boss is. They know who is the one who's in control. And if everything is lost, God's going to start putting things in place. It is this deep sense that God is in charge of my life. And he is working out the best for you. A divine exchange happens when we pray and tell the Lord our problems. 
when we pray that is why again prayer is so 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 important and i'm and if you're doing and i'm first and foremost you better be praying at your at, at and I'm not just saying pray before a meal, but I want you to have prayer individual times and many, and many of you have prayer, family prayer, many of you have you know, marital prayer between you and your spouse, but it's so important not only to have individual prayer at the house, but, it, but it's just as important for corporate prayer to pray together, being with like-minded people. If the church started with prayer, then prayer is important as well to continue. We give something to him and he gives something back, his peace. The Lord did not promise that the problems would go away. That he never did. That he never did. I'm sorry about that. But he never promised that your situation would just disappear. But he said that in your situation, I will give you peace. And if you don't even know how to hold yourself anymore or carry yourself, the Lord is there to carry you on. He did not promise that the difficulties would be removed, but in James 1, it did say that trials are good, actually. We grow because of them. We grow stronger, wiser, and more dependent on God. Paul said that he actually had a, a thorn. We don't know what that is, but he said he had a thorn in his flesh. In his flesh. He begged God to take whatever this thorn was, Oh, I mean, again, a lot of people speculate what it is. I'm not going to speculate what it is, but what I'm going to say, it's a thorn. We probably all have a thorn of some sort in our flesh. And God begged that it would be taken away three times, but God said, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. God did not remove the thorn, but he gave him grace. There is always a divine exchange. You tell God your problems, your issues, where you need healing, whatever it is, and he'll give you something back. Only God can give you his peace. Why? Because he is peace. I will say it again. He is the peace that you need. You can have peace even in the thorns of your life. It's a gift of God. It is a gift from God that no one else, and I, this is what I love, if it is truly a gift from God, then no one and nothing can rob you of his peace. Can I get an amen? People around you cannot take away the peace you have. The only time that you, here's the thing. The only time that that can happen is when you give it away. You know, you can give it away if you want. You can drop the peace and be full of all that stuff. But no one else can take it from you. Not the circumstances. You can't even say the devil made me do it. No, it is you who drop the peace if you want to. Other than that, no one ever can. This peace originates from the throne room of God himself. It also means that in this world, we cannot find true peace, whether through medicine or music or entertainment. You can't find peace online or on Facebook or, you know, anywhere. You fill in the blank. So come to God with your burdens. What did I say? Where else are you going to go? The choice is yours. Present your problems to him. And that's the only way that you can experience peace that truly goes beyond all understanding. Yeah. Last point that I have for you today is this. Meditate. Think about the true and good. Meditate on what's true and what's good. Don't focus on your problems. Don't focus on your symptoms. Boy, that is easier said than done. I struggle with that daily because here's the thing. This is the thing. I don't know why, but our problems seem to scream a lot more than the good. Isn't it interesting is that you could have 100 good things in your life, but the four bad things are going to scream louder than the 100 good things. Or here's the thing, too, is that all, everything's going great in your life, but one person is becoming a thorn in your flesh, and that is what you focus all the time on. Forget about everything else going well, but that one person, oh, just get, it grates to you, and you stay up all night, and you worry about it. But isn't it interesting that, that those problems uh, really get to us, that we ended up focusing that? Or you know what? It's, here's the thing is that 
You know, you could be having real, your, your health could be good, but there's one thing that's wrong and your focus all goes on that. Philippians 4, 7 and 9 again says this, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ. Finally, brothers and sisters, when I'm talking about focus, which I want you to focus on, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if there's anything excellent or praiseworthy in your life, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And when you think about these things, my peace, the peace of God, will be with you. We have the tendency not to remember good experiences, but we allow the bad experiences to linger rent-free in our mind all the time. Why do we want to remember them? We do not, why? Because we do not allow the peace of God to guard our hearts and our minds. These thoughts that we think of oftentimes are, are not true like we should, but they're false. They're not noble, but they're despicable. They're not right, but they're false. They're not pure, they're filthy. They're not lovely, they're, el they're ugly. They're not admirable, they're unworthy. They're not excellent or praiseworthy, they're shameful. But we allow them to stay in our minds rent-free. And what are the results? When you think about those things that are not of God, what you will have is those seeds that are planted will come out as anger in your life, envy in your life, worry in your life, hurt in your life. They will grow into the fruit of sorrow in your life. No wonder we have no peace in this country. No wonder we have no peace in our world. That's what's worrying is, is dwelling on the problems all the time. Luke 12, 25 says this, who of you by worrying in this room can add a single hour to your life? None of us. It is useless. It does not achieve anything and is a waste of time. Instead, we should be thinking about what is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy. Think about such things. What is that? God and his word. It is true, it is right, it is pure, and, is, and it is lovely. Church, and here's your next space. His word will give you faith, will give you hope, will give you joy, and will give you peace. Don't think so much about what people say. Think more about what the word says. Whether people say, people, whatever people say will go away, but this word will never go away. This is eternal. This is what gives you the peace and the joy that you need today. Psalm 1, 1 says this, Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. But those who delight in the law of the Lord, which is his word, and who meditate on this day and night, that person who reads the word, studies the word, memorizes the word, reads it and keeps going at it, is like a tree planted in streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose life and whose leaf will not wither. Whatever you do will prosper. Will, you want to have a, pros, pros, you want to have a prosperous life? Read the word. Study the word. Memorize the word. Meditate on God's word, not on people's words. What do you meditate on day and night? Think about that. What causes you to stay up all night and can't get to sleep? Is it the word of God or is it the words that other people have said? We cannot control the circumstances around us, but you can control what's in your mind. You have a choice on what you, th and what you want to think about. It is in your mind that the battles of your life are won or they're lost. Psalm 119, 11 says this, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. When David faced Goliath, he wasn't afraid because his mind was focused on God. In his mind, God was bigger than Goliath. 
Isaiah 26, 3 says, You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast. Why? Because they trust in God. Church, I want us to be a church of prayer. I want to be a, I want to be a church that meditates and studies and memorize, memorizes God's word. A divine exchange will take place. God will give you his peace. It is his free gift to you. It is his will for your life. And church, God wants to give you his true peace. You cannot experience that if you are not at peace with God. Receive Jesus as your savior and the sins of your life will be forgiven. You'll have a relationship with God and experience his love, joy, and peace in your life. And I'm going to close with this. Is there something that you're worrying about now? Is there something that you stress about now? Is there something that you complain about all the time without giving it to God? Today, the altar is yours. Give it to the Lord in prayer today. Elders, if you could come forward. All heads down. What is the Holy Spirit speaking to you about right now? Where do you need his healing touch today? James 5 says this. Is any one of you sick? Is any one of you hurting? Is any one of you in pain? Let them call on the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer that will be offered by our elders in faith will make the sick person well and the Lord will raise them up and if they have sinned they will be forgiven and matter of fact for those that are worrying for those that are struggling today 1 John 5 says this this is the confidence that we have when we approach God that if we ask God anything according to his will he will hear you and if we know that he hears you, that whatever you ask, maybe you're going to ask him about a burden, a health issue, a problem, an anxiety, a fear. We know that we will have whatever we ask of him. And so I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray and then we're going to go into one last song. And during that last song, I want us to to sing with everything we have to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But during that song, some of you need to come to the altar and you need to have a, you need to have a heavenly exchange. You need to put your burdens. See, we believe at this altar, there is a fire at this altar. And there is a fire at this altar that wants to burn your cares, that wants to burn your anxiety, that wants to burn your depression, that wants to burn your fear and eliminate it. But there's also a Holy Spirit that wants to exchange your fears with the fire of his Holy Spirit. Because when you give him your anxieties and your fears, he wants to give you his love and his hope and his peace that transcends all understanding. Think of the altar today as a place where you can lay your burdens down and you can pick up his peace. And if you need individual prayer, we have elders on both sides that want to anoint you with oil. Whatever you're struggling with, whatever the pain is, and they're going to pray by faith and we believe that you can be healed today. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. And I thank you in advance for the, for the fears and the doubts and the anxieties and the issues that are happening right now will be exchanged today. And that your peace your peace, a peace of yourself. Think of it like that. Your peace, a peace of yourself will come upon us and will guard our hearts and our minds. Lord, exchange our fears today for your heavenly peace that we need for tomorrow. In your holy name, amen. Amen. Let's take time and let's pray to our Lord God today.